next step is to define a payroll okay now creating creation of a payroll is not just like we just put the name and everything we have to get a idea what kind of payroll or what type of payroll we are creating and we should have some data in that okay uh, that data we will get from the our organization so uh, let me just first go to the screen of payroll and description this is a screen where we can create our payroll okay uh, a new payroll but now let's say we uh, implemented the oracle payroll we are implementing the oracle for payroll first time and now it is the first time when i have to create a payroll for that particular organization okay in the name we put the name of the payroll let's say our payroll name is xx test payroll okay here comes the period type what is the period type actually you know can be by month by week calendar month lunar month quarter semi month semi year week or a year okay these are the frequencies you can say uh, you can use the word frequency on which this payroll will get processed okay it's not just that i created a payroll i gave a period type of um, let's say bi weekly and then we are running that payroll on the monthly basis no we put this data according to what type of payroll running what type of payroll processing we want okay uh, let's say i will put the calendar month Okay. Now, for the calendar month, first period ended yeah. will be third. Yes. What do you mean by lunar month? We have seen one of the period type is lunar month, right? Yeah, exactly. It's uh, a month, but uh, I'm not even uh, exactly the sure with the definition. But it comes with the, uh, you know, um, eclipses type. So I'm even not sure. Uh, what is the meaning but it comes as uh, one month it is the uh, meaning is same as one month okay if i just pick it this up okay so i have to check this right i i actually never use this lunar month okay uh, i'll check and i'll let you know okay or give me just five ten minutes i'll check that okay so but this is also kind of month you know it's just like um, um when we create uh, the alerts okay there are types of you know like uh, frequency will be every other day every day okay or uh, every day of week every day of month every day of year so it's all sound same but there is a bit difference so i never uh, sorry apologize for this i never use this so i have to check it first what is this exactly the meaning of the lunar month okay then i'll clear it to you so right now i'm just going with the calendar month okay but uh, if i just go to the by month the first period day will be two months from now okay if i'll go to the by week okay then according to our week we have to put a first period end date now what is the first period end date first period end date is nothing that is the end upcoming uh, end date of this payroll okay if i put the uh, let's say calendar month okay now the first period end date will be 31st of july 2016 okay so it depends upon what period type we are selecting here okay if i select the yearly it will comes as the year end of uh, uh, you know last date of the year end of this year okay so yeah So now first period end date is when the first payroll period will end now if i create this one um, calendar month of uh, test payroll and it will be working for the from first of the july so the first period end date will be 31st of the july okay so that is also uh, you know the um, it is also the uh, date for paying up the check or check date okay so we generally what happen before this period end date or on this period end date we used to perform all of the our payroll related activity okay so this is 
how it comes with the first period end date. Now there is the number of year. So how long we want to run this payroll? Okay, let's say fifty years. Generic idea. Okay. Now date offset. Now what is the date offset? Okay. You know you guys uh, must be uh, getting the mails in uh, your organization that. Uh, uh, oftenly, at the time when there is a payroll process used to run, as in uh, for the Indian employees, that will be the end of the month. So before a uh, day or two or three or within a week, we we you know sometimes get other mails like uh, we can't change any uh, data for ourselves in the organization or like that. So these are the offsets. Okay, after that or before that, we will not make any changes. Now, what is the check offset? The check offset is nothing. It's we have to mention here values like minus one, minus two, like that. Okay. What is mean of minus one? It means just the day before the first period ended, we have to make the payment from check. Okay. So cut off. Okay. Check date. So we use this for the tax calculation. It's a pay date. So we used to mention here value as minus one or minus two. Okay. So this indicates what minus one or minus two from our first period end date. Okay. So let's see minus one. I'm putting it. It means that for the July month, the our check will get paid by the 30th of the July. Okay. What is cut off? Okay, this is the cut off date. Okay, this is the date or days. Uh, if I put the three, okay. Now, before running our payroll, the three days before running our payroll, okay. And we can't change any data related to the payroll. Okay, a new element will not get attached. After uh, before three days, you know, it means uh, if we are running our payroll on 20th from 17 to 20th, we will not be or HR will not be able to add new element or uh, additional data related to payroll in the application. So that is a cutoff date. Okay, now, schedule run. Okay, what is schedule run? It is the date. When we process our payroll, okay, so it can be this is 20. So on 20 of every month, we used to run our payroll. So this is just the information that on this date we used to run our payroll. Now there is a pay slip. Okay. What is pay slip? Okay, I didn't mention the pay slip. Just like the checkbox, this is the payslip uh, data. It will be like minus one or minus two. So, just before the period end date, okay, we get our payslips. Okay, or if I just put it in the positive way, uh, let's say payslip data is one. It means after running our payroll. Okay, if it is positive, it will compare with our schedule run date. Okay, it means if I put on the payslip as one. The payslip will get generated on the 21st. Okay, but if it is on the minus one, it will get compared with the first period end date. Okay, so generally for payslip, we put on the positive data two. Okay, now let's say two. Or it means two days after any. It means 22nd of the month we get the payslip data here. Okay, now. These are the op date offsets related to the payroll. We have to mention the cutoff date, which is mandatory, scheduled run date, and the check date. Okay, payslip is option. Okay, because you know what happened. Um, sometimes uh, the payroll get processed from uh, the application, and then uh, uh, you know uh, the payslip will generated generate get generated from external or third party vendor or some other interface. Although we have uh, the standard program for generating the payslips, but some organization use external interfaces or not. So payslip is not mandatory, but rest of the three fields are mandatory here. Now, 
The next information is payment method. Now here we attach our payment method, okay, which we have created in the payment method window. Here is our access test method, okay, and we attach our consolidation access test. Here. Cancelling this right now. It is not mandatory. Now, there is one checkbox negative payment allowed. Okay. If against any employee, I want to um, I want to pay the negative payments. Negative payments. It means um, uh, let's say if any employee take the advanced salary. Okay. When the uh, for the next month when the payroll let's say he take the uh, two months advance salary okay uh, for the for this June in in this June so when in the July I don't want to ditch that employee from my payroll data okay I want to have that employee in my payroll data with the negative payment okay the detail will come in the negative because he have already taken the salary for the July month. So if I want that scenario to be captured, we put this negative payment allowed. Okay. Now, what is the multiple assignments? Okay. Uh, let's say one employee is working for two different on uh, in a single organization. Let's say we have two subsidiary and there are some employees which are working on both of the subsidiary as a 50-50 percent, or uh, they have multiple assignments as in a um, uh, they are working for a, you know let's say some people are going to onshore uh, uh, on-site opportunities and uh, we created uh, another assignment for on-site opportunity and also they are handling the business in their offshore location okay I want to make the payment for both of the assignments so then we check the multiple assignments else if this checkbox will not be get checked whatever assignment person is having he will only get paid with the details what is having in his primary assignment so whenever you set up a payroll, okay, these things should have been cleared and the data should data sheet which we get from the client will contain all these data and details. Okay. So you know we don't set the uh, date offset by our uh, concern. We used to set these by the business purpose. Okay. So this is how we set the payroll. Let me just save this. Okay. Now we have to put the information in the further detail. Okay, pre-notification allowed means yes or no. Yes, this is just a mandatory thing. Terminated period running by first day after last standard process. Okay. Now, so what is terminated period earning by? It means whatever uh, the earnings are there. Okay, I want to close at the last standard process of the employee. Okay, what are the period earnings? We will terminate, we, I want to terminate that by the last standard process date of the employee. So we put that date. Let me just save it. Okay, I haven't put the costing information right here because you know we can enable costing as at six different levels. I'm not enabling the costing at payroll. I'll enable the costing at different levels. So I'm not putting up the costing information here. Okay, now we come to the next part, which is period date. Okay, so here we have to just want to run the payroll for the July month. The status should be open. Okay, now I have put the 50 years here. If you guys can see, so these period dates will be open for the next 50 years. Okay, if I put just one, then these uh, open uh, period dates will be open from 31st July 2016 to 31st July 2017. Okay, but here if you can see for 17, okay, for 18, these are the open periods. Okay, and the scheduled run is 28 of April because we have given the Scheduled run as of the 20th. Okay. Now, the check is minus 1. It means on the 31st of the March, March the check date is 30th of March. Okay. So, this, um, 
I think you, uh, I make it clear why we use and how we can use these data offset. Okay. And there will be cutoff data as well. Okay. And payslip date. Here is valid payment method, the same we have mentioned there. So, this is how we create our payroll. Okay. Now, whenever we create an employee and I want that uh, this employee belongs, you know, we, when we create the payroll, we have some uh, data in our um, in our hand that this, payroll, this particular payroll has been created for these set of employees or whatever employee will join for these conditions, for this particular location or these particular organizations, I'll attach these payroll. Okay. Uh, let's say if I create a payroll for um, Maharashtra and I'll name it XX Maharashtra payroll. Okay. Whomsoever employee will join at Maharashtra location, I'll assign that payroll to that particular employee. Okay. So this is how we create the payroll. This is what we have described till now. Okay. These are the valid payment methods. Okay. For a single. Okay. Can I just go here? Let me just. Okay, I can even attach another payroll method. Okay, I have attached one exit test method, but uh, let's say I thought that the uh, okay might be there will be some employees which don't want the uh, their salaries in check. I can attach a new payment method here. Cash. Okay, but the payment method should be in the system. Okay, the Right now, I'm putting up just the standard one which are giving here. So, we can add the multiple payment methods here. So, by default will be the first one which we define here. In this window, that will be the uh, by default payment method. Another also we can attach here. Uh, let's say check, uh, cash, uh, let's say check, okay, let's say. Okay, let's, I'll just add, add it. Let's see euro. So, even for a single payroll, we can attach the different payment method. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So, we can, the default will be the one which has been defined in the screen. The rest, we can also add the another payment method. 